The iPhone, the device that changed the world, has seen many different changes in its last 10 years. In this video, we're going to be exploring the best version of the classic iPhone OS. It's what made the iPhone unique and iconic, and that is iOS 6. Hey guys, what is going on? This is iAppleGeek. Welcome to Retro Reviews, the series where we go back in time and take a second look at a classic design. The design of iOS 6 has long been forgotten in light of its newer, shinier, more colorful versions. However, iOS 6 remains my favorite design of iOS ever. iOS 6 was born out of a time where Steve Jobs had influence on everything at Apple, including their device designs, and he was all about what a product could say for itself, so he put tons of styling, tons of taste into his designs. That's why when you look at the devices that were created under Steve Jobs, you can see a dramatic difference from the current devices that we currently see today. Everything had more styling, more depth, more texture, more feel. iOS was very unique and distinctly different from Android. Now when you think about it, every single application had their own styling, their own characteristics. Now in iOS, everything just looks exactly the same with the exact same white panels with black text and it. it's just all uniform. iOS back in the day was not like that. Except for certain software restrictions, every application and area in iOS was visually different from the previous app you were just in. And one of the favorite things I liked to play with back in the day was the slide to unlock slider. I mean, who doesn't like slides? Come on. Whee! One major problem with iOS 6 and iOS in general is the planned obsolescence. Like if you go into the app store and try to download your favorite apps, it's not gonna let you unless you update your device to at least iOS 8, 9, or 10. But if you're someone like me and you've been spoiled with the new features like Control Center on these newer firmwares, and you don't really like some of the flat designs, maybe you just wanna go back and use an older firmware for a little bit. Sorry to break it to you, but that is easier said than done. Especially when it comes to iOS 6. It was an old firmware Apple has made it obsolete a long time ago. And if you wanna go back, first of all, you're going to need a jailbreak on iOS 7, 8, or 9 on the 32-bit devices that once supported iOS 6. I will have those devices in the description. You want to go into Cydia, add this source I'll have in the description as well, and be sure to make a backup before attempting this. Come in here and install the Cool Booter Beta. This is the tool you're going to use to boot iOS 6 on one of your devices. And I don't recommend you guys do this on your main device. But once you install that package, you will see a new icon on your home screen. Open it and it will look something like this. Go ahead and tap install, and in here you can select the iOS version you want to go back to. For me, I'm going to select 6.1.3 because that was the latest one for the iPod 5 that was able to be jailbroken. Here you have a little storage button. You want to tap on that and partition off a section of your storage to the other firmware. And I don't recommend you guys do this if you have a small capacity device. Only if your device has at least 32 gigabytes. I doubt you have much room for this if you have a 16 gigabyte device. I recommend sectioning off at least 6 to 10 gigabytes so that you have enough room to play around with the other firmware. 4 gigabytes at the least. And once you're ready, go ahead and click on I'm ready. It's going to ask you if you want a verbose boot. I'll show you what that means in a second. And it asks you to jailbreak the other firmware. I hit yes because why not visit the old Cydia as well. So if you happen to have a device on one of those firmwares, jailbroken, you have quite a combination. You can go back and explore this classic firmware. As you can see, it does take a little while, but eventually, if it asks you to reboot your device, go ahead and do that. And once your device boots back up, go ahead and unlock it and go back to the Cool Booter application. 
Now go ahead and hit the boot button and it'll ask you to unlock your device. You have to do this every time your device reboots or runs out of battery because it'll reboot back to your main firmware. In my case, that's iOS 7.1.2. So once you've locked your device and waited a few seconds, you will see a verbose boot if you chose that option. That's the scrolling text that looks like you're hacking the device. It looks really, really cool. But if you decided not to have this during the installation, it will go ahead and bypass it automatically. Once your device is finished booting for the first time, you will be booted into the setup screen for iOS 6. Here you'll be able to set up the device like you normally would on an iOS 6 device. Please note that activation lock still applies to iOS 6 because it's using a newer version of the Apple ID. So you will need your Apple ID and password to activate the device. And that is it. You can now begin using your device on iOS 6. One little side note is that if you do have two-factor authentication turned on for your Apple ID, you are going to need an eligible device to log in on this device. And it'll give you instructions on how to do that. Now obviously, if you chose to jailbreak the other firmware, you will be able to have Cydia on your home screen, and in here you'll be able to install tweaks. A lot of them don't work because this is a dual-booted firmware but you still can explore some of the more simple tweaks. So now you'll be able to go and explore the classic design of iOS 6. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more videos like this. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.